How you guys doing? This is Mike from 603 M Tech Auto Works. Today we have another M177 engine down on the engine table. This happens to be a 2019 E63 with about 55,000 miles. Now we're actually got this engine down because we're doing the rear main seal, the oil separator, and engine mounts. But Adam here is our shop foreman. I mean, this is all he does is does all the big engine work around here. We call him the M177 engine king. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but all right. So today uh, we're kind of going to just walk through why this engine is down on the engine table. So it originally came in here for an oil change, um, and then we found an oil leak. So you tell us what exactly what we found. So this engine's down for the main reasons because this came in for an oil change, and we saw an oil leak. Now it was between the engine and transmission, and a lot of people know that means a rear main seal. Unfortunately, it is kind of a common problem on these earlier 177s between the years of 18 and 19. And a lot of times it's because, well, one reason is the rear main seal is just bad. So Mercedes is an updated rear main seal for that. The another biggest reason is these front uh, crankcase breather boxes. Now, a lot of times they go bad, they get clogged up with carbon and the engine can't breathe, which creates excessive vacuum and blows out the seal. Okay. Now, have you ever seen it where it creates like excessive pressure or anything like that? Or? Yeah, no, yeah. pressure, vacuum, you know, positive, negative, it, whatever it does is depends on how it clogs in here. And now, obviously we're doing the remain seal because that's leaking, but is there yeah. any other seals that could leak? Around this, yeah, a lot of times the valve covers can leak. Valve covers? Yeah, yeah, so it's just an RTV underneath the valve covers. And a lot of times you can tell is if you pull out a coil pack when you're doing a spark plug job, you're gonna see a bunch of oil in the spark plug uh, coil pack tubes and that means your valve cover gases or RTV is failing. Right so when you're basically if you're ever doing spark plugs on a, any of these engines you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're not seeing any oil in there. Yep. So because obviously if you see oil in there you got bigger problems. Right and honestly the one of the biggest problems is that most of them not all of them but you have to remove the engine to take the valve covers off yeah, just because so. it's so tight in the engine man. So it's a very very big job yep. engine has to come down and that's just a lot more labor hours on top of removing the engine. Right, exactly. And well, a lot of people might ask like, oh, why do you remove the engine from the car? You know, you can do the breathers in the car, you can take transmission in the car. I mean, a lot of times it just makes sense just to pull it down because there's also a lot of wire in there, especially depending on the age of the vehicle. Right. So this one's got like 55K, 60K. You want to address his engine mounts, so we did that. That's a big reason why we dropped it down because you have to remove the subframe to do those engine mounts. So at that point, you know, you have this apart, you know, this apart, transmission out. It just makes sense just to drop the engine in this case. Right, and the client, you know, that's why another reason he also wanted the engine down is because he wanted to also address anything that we saw while the engine was down. So, I mean, we've already replaced yep. a couple coolant lines. Yep. Um, we're going to replace an AC line um, and things like that. So, yeah, when you have this engine down, you definitely want to address a lot of things. Now, going back here, the rear main yep. seal, you said something about the, the plate being updated. Yep, yeah, it's a totally different uh, plate. Uh, it's updated by Mercedes-Benz, of course. Yep. Um, yeah, you can see the different materials. Yep, different seal, different, it looks like different hole, different plate, um, different sealant path as well, different bolts too. The yeah, so bolts are updated. Updated bolts are super important with these. You don't want to be using the old ones. Mm -hmm. um, so we have all that, and then this, this engine, I mean, special tools. Tell me about special tools. A lot tools. of special tools. A lot of special tools, just the rear main seal, um, this has a wet clutch, so a lot of times these pins, you know, you can put the pins in so a transmission slides off evenly. If not, you know, the clutch can get stuck and then fall out. Um, there's a lot of special tools, you know, we just did a uh, oil control harness and we had to order like five tools just to do that. Yes, I mean, these pins right here, these are game changer. Yeah. If they were a little bit longer, it'd be great, but honestly, yeah. game changer for you know, removing that transmission and getting access to that rear main seal. Right, it makes it able to slide off so you're not coming at an angle and you're pulling it out. Right, so this engine, special tools are very, very important. We actually ordered all the special tools and I mean, I feel like there was like 10 or 12 of them. Yeah, they're a good amount. Mount. Yep. And we have all the ones for the transmission as well. Yep. Um, going back to that oil control valve that we we're talking about. Yep. So, I mean, we did a video on that. Yep. Now, if this was it, your engine, would you also do that while it, this whole engine was yeah, there? Yeah, it'd already be on the engine stand. Stand. Because yeah. you would because you have to do the same exact thing. Yeah, exactly. So you know? basically, we were talking about that $150 part in there, that oil control valve. We actually have a YouTube video on that, a couple reels. But it's like about a $150 part. 
And if that goes bad, you're gonna have to do all this plus more. Because to yeah. remove this oil pan, I mean, you gotta remove the, the rear main seal, the front seal, so it's a yeah. lot of extra labor. So just say, if that, if that sensor does go bad yeah. in yeah. a year. Bad. You're it's, doing all this again, right? you know, and more. So. Yeah, so just know when you're going into a job like this, it's, it could be very, very expensive. Right, and like we said in that last video, that harness isn't just specific to this engine, it's pretty much on most Mercedes-Benz engines, right. um, but obviously this is the most labor-intensive. Intensive, yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yep. Um, and then we also took care of the, the engine mounts. Yep. We're gonna take care of the transmission mount. Yeah, but a lot of inspection too. So the plastic intake manifolds on this engine tend to crack. So we like to inspect those um, when it's out because that's another engine out job. <laughs> right. And if, if your car is tuned or anything and you still got these plastic intakes, I mean, they sell upgraded intakes. So it's definitely something to consider if you're trying to put down a lot of power while your engine's down. This is definitely something, if I was doing a bunch of performance stuff to my engine, this would be the first thing I update. Oh yeah, I mean, if it was my car, it'd be turbos, down pipes, right pipes intake right. manifolds, name it. Um, one of the, honestly, one of the hardest aspects of this engine, I personally believe, and a lot of dealer techs can confirm this, is just this intercooler setup. So what makes it so bad is, you know, obviously you got the harness, you know, you got all these cooling hoses, lines, you name it. Now, out of the car, it's really not that bad to take out, obviously, but in the car, you probably got a half inch of space. So you gotta take the, you know, the radiator package out, the AC condenser, the, the fan, you know, it's a lot of, some of them you have to take the whole front oh, grill off. out. Yeah. It's, you know, it's one of those things. So if you have to do that, you know, dropping the engine just makes it easier. Right. So basically there's no shortcuts to this. No, there's no shortcuts. At all. It's, it's, nothing's easy to do. Nope. I mean, not even spark plugs. I mean, honestly, if you've done a bunch, it's, it gets yeah. a little easier, but it's still not a fun job to do. Well, even the spark plugs, you know, people can do it themselves, which is fine. Um, but a lot of times they do it themselves and they have a fuel smell. Exactly. We get that because a lot of times, you know, the spark plug seats, there's a lot of dirt down there. People don't blow out the spark plug holes. Even if they do, there's still like some corrosion, corrosion. that develops between the spark plug seat and the cylinder head. And you have to like uh, use a special tool to clean that surface up. Right. So basically, if you're a <laughs> DIY guy and you're doing spark plugs on this engine, Make sure that those uh, you know spark plug holes are, are cleaned. There's no corrosion down there because I promise you, you will be bringing it to a shop and that shop will be addressing that issue. Um, so tell us about the, the dry belts. I mean, nobody can probably see the, the dry belts in yep. the video. Yep. Um, I mean, you can see them, but there's actually two dry belts on those. Two dry belts. Um, yep, that's another thing that we did address because you know a lot of the times, not on every single one of them, but you have to take these intercoolers off. On this one, you have to. Uh, we did the dry belt, dry belt tension as a pulleys while it was out because you might as well. Um, it wasn't that much extra labor, obviously. Um, one of the more annoying parts is one of the pulleys is actually, actually backwards. So you have to take the alternator out to remove a bracket that's holding the pulley just to get it replaced. Right, so, so I mean, dealers are charging you know, anywhere from you know, four to six, seven hours, depending on where you go. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's definitely not like a cheap engine to maintain. I will say it's a very stout engine. Um, overall, we've seen them for 150,000 miles, no problems. Um, obviously, it takes a little love to keep it on the road, right. but they, you know they handle a lot of power. The transmissions are good. The engines are overall just very good engines. Good so you know a lot of people that have E63, C63, whatever with M177 engine. Uh, they don't actually mind spending the money because it's just it's a good reliable car and they actually hold their value very well. Yeah. One last thing is we uh, the, the exhaust clamps because every time we yep. order these things, yep. they're always different. Can you tell me why they're different? Yeah, they're updated. Updated. They're okay. updated. Um, they're a lot more beefy uh, because actually the clamps that it comes with are just they're bad. They leak uh, O2 codes, uh, lean rich codes, um, all updated parts. It's just they're way better. Honestly, they're easier to install too. That that's good for me. Easy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so these are the exhaust clamps right here. These are the updated ones. Yep. Um, these are actually very expensive for what they are. Yep. I'm not sure exactly, but these are, I mean, at least looking at $200 right here just for all this, you know. So these are very expensive, and then you also have to order the screws separate. So you, and these are, this is one separate part number, and this is a separate part number, and then you also have to order the screws. So, um, yeah, those exhaust clamps, 
this is you have to replace these when you're removing the old ones because they will leak and cause issues. Yeah, a lot of details go into this engine. Big you time. Know, um, just little things that you should, a lot of things actually, a lot of little things you should do just to, while you have it all out. Right. So you're probably wondering how expensive is this job actually to do? So it is, it can get very expensive. I mean, just this job alone with all these jobs that we're doing in combination, I mean, it's 20 plus hours in labor. So, I mean, just say your labor rate's $200 an hour. I mean, that's, that's $4,000 right there down the drain just in labor. I mean, that doesn't include the parts. These engine mounts are expensive. I think they list for about over $500 a piece. Um, and then obviously your rear main seal, which isn't really um, that expensive for what it is, but then also your, your oil separators. And I take that back. Those plates are actually more expensive than I, I thought. I, I could, could have sworn they're about like 500 bucks or so, which is a lot. Um, a money for a rear main seal, but I think that's just because they updated them and they're common so they can charge whatever they want <laughs> but um, You tell me Adam like You know everybody's probably wondering why is the engine down now all these jobs you can do in In the vehicle absolutely, you know, but why is it easier for you to just do it with the engine down? Yeah, so I mean I could do this in the car. I could pull the transmission in the car um, I could do the motor mounts in the car but you know, whether I move the engine or do all that in the car, to me, it's paying the same amount of labor time. Right. Now, it's up to the tech what they want to do, but I find this the easiest. Like I said, I'm getting paid the same, and I'm just going to do it faster because of this, and that's the name of the game. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would say you're doing faster, but you're also be able to, it's, it's just a lot more cleaner. Well, it's a lot cleaner, right? Yeah. I can, yeah, just make sure everything's dialed in. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you're going to be cramped up, especially, you know, in an E63 engine bay. Right. You know, it's just going to be cleaner work. And we're able to just like see the little things. Like there was a little vacuum line that we're actually replacing. Now we didn't, yep. we didn't break it or anything, but it looked like somebody had previously been in here and tried to glue some vacuum line. Now it was able, it, it was just so much easier for us to visually see it with the engine down rather yep. than it actually hoisted up there, subframe down and the engine's just hanging. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. Now this way we can actually, you know, a lot of times here we do like to, you know, clean up all the grease we see, you know, right. oil, dirt. So, you know, we'll run through the engine with some degreasers, some rags, make it look nice, especially if it's all out like this. Right. So if you're, if you're doing all this together, we, I would personally recommend dropping the engine. I think most people would, <laughs> um, but you know, some people that aren't familiar with these engines are probably wondering why. So that's, kind of why we do it yeah. um like yeah. i said labor's labor's getting expensive this job's a very big job and like i said if you add up all the labor hours to do it in the car it actually could be a little bit more so i mean barely but it, it could be a little bit more so it is a lot easier to do it with the engine down um and it just saves a lot of time we right. can uh, inspect everything and make sure everything looks good yeah yep exactly it's just you know it Basically, if you were to do it all in the car at the end of the day, you're basically already there. Right. You know, it's being held up with an engine cr uh, cradle. Right. And it's like three more hoses, a couple right. electrical connections. Exactly. The engine would be down anyways. Exactly. You know, so. And uh, you've said this a bunch of times, but Mercedes makes it pretty easy to remove engines. Yeah. I mean, they put, you know, easy, you know, it's labor right. intensive, but, you know, <laughs> right. it's... Uh, you know, they make the quick disconnects, you know, they make it so like assembly line, right? You know, the body drops down on it, a couple bolts, you know, a couple right. bolts. Right. You know, it's not like a big giant where you have to disconnect the whole harness from the engine. You know, they make basically the only connectors up here, pull this engine, there's three connectors and the, all the electrical was done. Right. You know, it's, they make it uh, simplified at least. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So if you guys have an M177 engine and you know, maybe you don't have any problems with it now. I highly suggest bring it to a shop that's just specialized in just Mercedes or even bringing it to the dealership, making sure that you're getting a tech that's super familiar with this engine because you don't want to mess around with this. It could get very expensive. And if you bring it somewhere that knows how to work on these engines, they can catch things ahead of time. Um, if you want to bring it to us, you can reach out to us at our website, 603mtech.com or give us a call, 603-232-6500. But this is, you know, all we're around is Mercedes every day. Uh, we're trying to do these videos to basically educate these M177 owners. That way their engine doesn't end up looking like this.